In this video, I'm going to show you how to very simply update your firmware on your Ender 3 version 2 to the Gyres configuration. Why would you want to do this? Well, the stock firmware on the version 2 is very basic and it's missing some very useful features that you can add with this firmware. Updating firmware is nowhere near as scary as it used to be and you'll probably be able to complete this in less time than it takes you to watch this video. There are a huge number of features added with this firmware and rather than go through them all, I'll just put them up here. Gyres is just a configuration of Marlin firmware that unlocks a lot of features missing from the standard Creality firmware that comes with your Ender 3 version 2. It was created by a very helpful person called Jake Myers who gave it to all of us for free. If you'd like to say thank you to Jake like I did with a small or large contribution, there are links below in the description where you can do this. The main reason I wanted to update the Gyres firmware was because with the standard Creality firmware you only get to see 14 characters of the print file name. If you dare to make any of your file names longer than 14 characters then it will very helpfully chop off the last two digits and replace them with some pointless dots for your trouble. The Gyres firmware changes all this by scrolling the entire file name across the screen. With the new firmware you'll also have a much simpler time tramming your bed. On the very simplest version there's a feature that drives the nozzle to all four corners of your bed independently so you don't have to mess around with disabling steppers and risking your Z height changing during leveling. Basically, it will make the whole experience of owning and using an Ender 3 version 2 much more pleasant. Assuming you've now decided that you do want all of this cool stuff for free, then you need to first check that you can use the Gyres UI or user interface. To do this, you're going to need to see what's written on your control board. With your printer turned off, move your x-axis gantry to the top and undo the screw under the left side of the bed and then gently lay your printer on its side, being careful not to damage any wiring. Remove the remaining screws on the bottom and remove the cover. Once you get to your board, you need to find the board number written under the Creality logo and make a note of it. Then find the square black processor chip and read what it says on it. If it says RET6, then it has 512K of flash memory, which is enough for the Gyres firmware. Unfortunately, if it says RCT6, then it only has 256K of memory, which isn't enough, and you're going to have to look for some different firmware if you want to update. If you have anything different written on your chip, then you may need to Google to find out if your chip has enough memory for the Gyres firmware. This is all the information we need from the control board, so you can now reattach your cover and stand your printer back up. Now turn the printer on, navigate to the motion menu, and write down all the information in the submenus. We'll use this later to make sure your printer prints the same after the update. If, like me, you're lucky enough to have the RET6 CPU, then you now have all the information you need to be able to download and update your firmware. Remove your SD card and then head to your nearest desktop computer or laptop. First, if you want a backup option in case you run into trouble, then find the standard Creality firmware from the link below. Select the board number that we just found out and then choose the binary or bin file for your printer. It will either be the one that says BL Touch in the name if you have a BL or CR Touch, or the one without this in the name if you don't have one. Download the file and put it somewhere sensible on your computer so that you can go back to standard firmware if you want to. While you're here, grab the dwinset zip folder for later when we update the screen files in case you also want to put this back to the Creality version. Now we're going to go and find the Gyres firmware that we actually want to use. Click on the Gyres firmware link in the description below. This link will take you to the GitHub page with many options of files that you can download. It can be very confusing trying to decide what to start with, so I'll try and keep the selection as simple as possible. If you don't have a bed probe like the BL or CR Touch, the simplest choice is one of the files that has the word default in it. Which one you need again depends on your board number. Download the one that matches your board. At the time of making this video, there are only two options, 4.2.2, which I have, or 4.2.7. All of the other options that don't have BL Touch in the file name give you various options for ways to level your bed. If you don't know what any of them mean, then try the default file option until you're confident that you want to try one of the others. It's very easy to come back and try a different file at any time. If you do have a bed probe, then you'll want to choose a file that has BL Touch in the name and your board number. The 3x3, 5x5, 10x10 and 15x15 numbers relate to how many times the printer will probe the bed. If you think you have a warped bed, then go for a higher number. If you want to create a bed level quicker with a little less accuracy, then try a smaller number. Just to add a little more confusion, if the file name has HS in it, then it means high speed and will let the probe throw caution to the wind and zoom around without retracting. UBL means that it uses unified bed leveling to create a mesh. If you want to learn more about all of these different options, then check out the links below. Download the firmware option that you think is best for you. Okay, now I've really confused you, let's get into SD card formatting options. <laughs> I like to always tell you how to reverse any changes you're making, so before we get started, copy the entire contents of your SD card to a dedicated folder on your computer. This way you can copy it all back if you need to, or just if you want some or all of the print files on your card again once you're done. Now you're going to need to format the SD card. 
Now I will say here that storage media formatting is far from my speciality, so if I get anything wrong, please correct me in the comments below. This information is just what I learned before doing this myself. You need to do a full format of your SD card as a FAT32 volume. It also needs to be MBR, not BPT, whatever that means. I used the eight gig card that came with the printer, formatted it as FAT32, and it worked perfectly. Once your card is formatted, copy the GIRS file that you just downloaded onto the card and eject it. You're now ready to take the card back to your printer. If for any reason you have any problem with the next stage, then delete the GIRS file and put the Creality file that you just downloaded onto the SD card and use the same process. This will put the firmware back to the Creality configuration. With the printer turned off, insert the card and turn it on. The screen will take a short while to turn on, but when it does, the new firmware will be installed. There are now a number of new features to play with, but before you start playing, go back and check the motion settings to see that they match what you wrote down earlier. If not, edit them now. When you're happy, don't forget to take your SD card back to your computer, delete the bin file and copy back any files you want back on your card. Just make sure you leave out the eeprom.dat file. This is no longer needed as all this information will be stored on the control board now that you have GIS firmware. To get the full benefit of the GIS update, you'll also want to update the screen files. Click here to find out how to do that or click here for another video you might like. Don't forget to leave a comment below to let me know your favorite feature of the GIS firmware. Thanks for watching.